In the following lecture, we're going to discuss a perfectly elastic collision where momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved. So I've drawn two diagrams. One is before collision. So there are two particles approaching uh, each other and colliding with each other. There's a particle with mass m1 and a particle with mass m2. Uh, the initial speed is u1 for particle m1 and initial speed for particle m2 is u2. And they're approaching each other and they collide. And after collision, once that collision, elastic collision happens, uh, the particles go their separate way. They go in opposite directions, particle M2 traveling with a final velocity V2 and particle M1 traveling with a final velocity V1. So as we have previously discussed for an elastic collision, uh, two things uh, that we are going to write down. One is that the initial momentum is going to be equal to the final momentum. Uh, that is true for any collision and since it's an elastic collision that means energy is conserved um, which is that initial kinetic energy is going to be equal to final kinetic energy so law of conservation of momentum would apply and law of conservation of energy would apply initial kinetic energy would be equal to the final kinetic energy now in this lecture based on these two uh, points that the momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved I'm going to try and derive this equation which uh, basically means that u1 minus u2 u1 was the velocity uh, initial velocity initial velocity of uh, m1 u2 was the initial velocity of m2 so u1 minus u2 is the difference in the initial velocities v1 minus v2 is the difference in the final velocities after collision v1 is in this direction v2 is in that direction so the difference in the initial velocities and difference in the final velocity is going to be equal except for a minus sign because the direction of the velocities would change after collision. Uh, this particle was heading in this direction after collision this particle is going in the opposite direction. So, so the basic idea is that the difference in initial velocity is going to be equal to the difference in the final velocity of the two objects except for a minus sign because the direction would have changed. So this is, uh, this is the equation that we plan to derive based on these two statements, law of conservation of momentum and law of conservation of energy. So we're going to try and derive this particular equation given over here. Now starting with the first statement that the momentum is conserved, uh, I'm going to calculate the initial momentum first. Initial momentum is going to be it's going to be m1 multiplied by u1 that would be the initial momentum for uh, this uh, object over here so it's uh, m1 multiplied by u1 and then it, the other object has a momentum m2 u2 but the direction is in the opposite direction so i'm taking the uh, the direction to the right as the positive direction so this one is in the negative direction so it's going to be it's going to be minus m2 u2 so that's your initial momentum just make sure that the direction to the right is the one that is being taken as the positive direction and the direction to the left uh, towards the left is taken as the negative direction and this would be true for the entire question entire derivation that we are trying to do over here so m1 u1 and this would be minus m2 u2 because the direction is in the in the negative direction now initial momentum is equal to final momentum so calculating the final momentum after collision uh, this uh, object is going to have a final momentum of m1 v1 but it's going to be minus m1 v1 because it's going towards the left in the negative direction so it's uh, going to be equal to uh, it's going to be equal to minus m1 v1 and the other object the second object has a momentum uh, m2 v2 and that's in the positive direction it's going in the right uh, direction that in in the towards the right so that's positive direction so this one has uh, a momentum of m2 v2 so that would be plus m2 v2 let's move to the second statement which was the law of conservation of energy which is since it's an elastic collision uh, the initial kinetic energy is going to be equal to the final kinetic energy. So, so let's calculate the initial kinetic energy. The formula of kinetic energy is uh, half mv square. Uh, so for this object, it's going to be half m1 u1 square. And for this object, it's going to be half m2 u2 squared. So it's going to be, let's write that down, the initial kinetic energy. It's going to be half m1 u1 squared plus half m2 uh, u2 squared. Remember, I'm not... 
I did not change the sign, although the directions of the two objects are different, but I did not ch change the sign because uh, kinetic energy is not a vector quantity. Energy is not a vector quantity. Its uh, direction does not change its sign. So, so it's half m1 u1 squared and half m2 u2 squared. That's the initial kinetic energy. The final kinetic, kinetic energy is going to be half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared. So let's write that down. It's going to be half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared. Now, using uh, these two equations, I'm going to try and derive uh, uh, the equation that I wanted, u1 minus u2 is equal to minus v1 minus v2, which was that the speed of uh, collision, uh, the difference in the speed of collision and the difference in the speed of uh, separation after collision, uh, that is going to be equal except for this minus sign over here. So I'm going to use these two equations to derive this particular equation. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is uh, I'm going to make uh, M1 the subject of this equation. So I'm going to copy this equation and try and make M1 the subject of the equation. So it's uh, it's M1 U1 uh, minus M2 U2 is going to be taken to the other side. So it's going to become plus M2 U2. And M1 V1 would be brought to the left. So if I bring it to the left, it's going to become plus M1 V1. And on the other side, you already have uh, you already have M2 V2. So this is, uh, I've rearranged the terms. And I'm going to make M1 and M2 the subject of the equation. So it's going to be M1, which would become U1 plus V1. And on the other side, I have, uh, I'm going to take M2 as common. Then it's going to become U2 plus V2. So M1 comes out to be equal to, uh, if I take this U1 plus V1 term on the other side, it's going to become M2, U2 plus V2. Divide that by uh, u1 plus v1. So this is what m1 is. So I have derived uh, using the first equation. I figured out what m1 is equal to. It's equal to m2 u2 plus v2 divided by u1 plus v1. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this value of m1 into this equation to my second equation and try to solve that simultaneously. So re I'm rewriting this entire uh, equation, the uh, equation for conservation of energy. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute M1, which is over here, and M1 over here with, with uh, this M1, which I derived from the first law of conservation of momentum equation. So I'm going to do that now. So let's start rewriting this first equation, which is half M1 U1 square. Now half M1 is this thing over here, so it's going to become M2, uh, U2 plus V2, and divide that by, so dividing that, U1 plus V1, and then it is uh, U1 squared, so that would be multiplied by U1 squared plus half m2 u2 squared so half m2 u2 squared and on the right side I have again half m1 v1 squared so half m1 would be substituted by this m1 over here so it's going to become m2 u2 plus v2 and divided by u1 plus v1 So that is half M1, M1 V1 squared. So I'm going to multiply that by V1 squared followed by half M2 V2 squared. So these are the terms that I have substituted. Uh, this is basically M1. So it was half M1 U1 squared. This is also M1 which was half M1 V1 squared.
Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, divide the entire equation by a half which is going to remove uh, all these uh, uh, constants. The, every term was being multiplied by a half. So if I divide the entire equation by half, this get, gets rid of this uh, constant over here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this term uh, to, to the left side and m2u2 squared to the right side. So rewriting the entire equation. So I've rewritten the entire equation. I brought this term to the left, so the sign changed. It became minus m1v1 squared, and I brought this term m2u2 to the right, so its sign changed as well and became minus m2u2 plus m2v2 squared. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, these terms m1 and m1 common, so it's going to become m1 u1 squared minus v1 squared I'm and on the other side I'm going to take m2 term common and it's going to become minus u2 squared this term remember is squared I forgot to write that so it's going to become um, uh, minus m2 would be m2 would be taken common so it's going to become u2 squared uh, minus u2 squared plus v2 squared so I've uh, rewritten the entire equation so it's uh, it's m1 this term m1 u1 mi squared minus v1 squared m2 is common and it's minus u2 squared plus v2 squared so this entire equation has been this previous equation has been rewritten uh, another thing i would do is m2 and m2 are common so i'm going to cancel them i'm going to divide the entire equation by m2 and it's going to get cancelled out the next thing what i'm going to do is uh, if you've uh, noticed this term over here it's uh, u1 minus v1 squared u1 squared minus v1 squared or if you remember your math properly it's if you remember a square minus b square, it could be rewritten as uh, the entire term could be rewritten as u1 minus v1 and u1 plus v1. It could be rewritten as a product. Similarly, this term over here, if I rewrite this term the other way around, it's v2 square minus u2 squared or a square minus b squared it could be rewritten as well it could be rewritten in terms of it's, it would become v2 minus u2 multiplied by v2 plus u2 so in the next step what i'm going to do is instead of writing this expression i'm going to substitute this expression into the equation similarly instead of writing this expression over here i'm going to substitute this expression into the equation so I've uh, rewritten the entire equation. Uh, instead of u1 squared minus v1 squared, I've substituted this uh, on both sides. Uh, now we need to simplify this expression now, and a lot of things will get cancelled out. For example, if you if you've noticed, u1 plus v1 is going to get cancelled out by u1 plus v1 over here. So these two terms will get cancelled out. Similarly, uh, u2 plus v2 on the left hand side and v2 plus u2 they are the same terms on both sides appearing on both sides so they would get cancelled out as well uh, the last two terms that are not cancelling out are so I'm going to rewrite those terms it's u1 minus v1 and on the other side I have v2 minus u2 and finally this uh, equation could be further rewritten as u1 minus u2 and minus v1 minus v2 which is the difference in the initial velocities of the two objects is equal to the difference in the final velocities of the two objects except for this minus sign because the direction is going to be opposite after collision so initial uh, difference in velocity uh, of the two objects before collision is equal to minus sign multiplied by the final difference in velocities of the two objects